Welcome to this video on Thevenin's theorem. Uh, we've looked at previous worked examples of questions involving Thevenin's theorem in other videos, and in this video we're going to do something very similar, but looking at a particular type of circuit, uh, which is an example of a pi network. So you can see here this particular circuit arrangement um, with these three impedances or resistances arranged in this kind of uh, this shape here is, is normally termed as a pi network uh, in the sense that it represents uh, the letter pi, uh, the Greek letter pi, uh, like that. So we've got these three resistors arranged like so. And we're going to uh, do what we've done previously and determine the Thevenin equivalent circuit of this particular example. So just like in our previous videos, uh, the intention here is to simplify this circuit down to just one Thevenin resistance and one Thevenin voltage. If you haven't watched our previous videos on Thevenin's theorem where we cover the basics of this principle and the steps that are involved, I suggest going back to those videos first. But let's apply these same principles in this particular example. What's often confusing about a Pi network when it comes to determining the equivalent circuit is that we have two current loops in this circuit even though the terminals are open circuits. So I have two open circuit terminals here and so current at present is not going to flow um, along these stretches towards the terminals here. But I am still going to have two current loops in this circuit. There's a current that flows around this loop here through the 470 ohm resistor and we can also imagine another current loop which flows through the 330, 220 and round like so. And so when we're evaluating the Thevenin equivalent circuit, it helps to try and visualize where these current loops are and to take that into consideration when we're determining the Thevenin voltage. We said in previous examples that we find the Thevenin voltage by uh, measuring the voltage or calculating the voltage across the resistor um, where we are taking our measurement at the open terminals. We want to find the open uh, the open circuit voltage across the terminals. And so in this case, we can see that we're essentially taking our voltage across the 220 ohm resistor. And so because we're measuring across this resistor here, this is the current loop that we are most concerned about in this particular circuit. We can imagine that this current loop here forms a potential divider of sorts. We have a 330 ohm resistor and we have a 220 ohm resistor in that current loop and it's the 220 ohm resistor that we are actually measuring our voltage across. The 470 ohm resistor is a little bit of a red herring in this circuit because the, the, the current loop that flows through the 470 doesn't actually affect our open circuit voltage and we'll see in our calculations that even if this value changed, it wouldn't affect the Thevenin voltage that we're going to calculate. So let's go ahead and use our potential divider formula to calculate the Thevenin voltage in this circuit. We know that the Thevenin voltage is the supply voltage, Vs, multiplied by a fraction. Again, if you haven't seen our previous videos where we go through this uh, in more detail, it's probably worth going back to those first. But in this case, we're measuring across the 220 ohm resistor, or we can think of ourselves as doing so. And so we can put the 220 on the top. On the bottom of the fraction, we put our impedances uh, or resistances added together. But in this case, we're only interested in the current loop that we are concerned with, which is this one here with the 220 in. And so if the resistance is added together on the bottom of the fraction will be 220 plus 330 and we can simplify that a little bit Vs first of all we have a voltage of 20 volts there multiplied by uh, 220 over uh, what will add up to 550 and if I calculate that I come up with a value of 8 volts so our Thevenin voltage in this circuit is 8 volts and you can see again the 470 
doesn't come into it. So even if that value changed, uh, it wouldn't actually affect the end result when it comes to the open circuit voltage in this particular Pi network. The next step in Thevenin's theorem is to calculate the Thevenin resistance. And just like our previous examples, the idea of calculating the Thevenin resistance is to find the resistance from one terminal to the other. And as part of that, we need to short out any voltage supplies. So the first thing I'm going to do here is remove this particular voltage supply here. I'm going to replace it with a short circuit. So I'll mark that in uh, like so. And I'll just label it SC for short circuit. So we've removed this particular power supply. And we're going to do the same as in our previous examples. We're going to find the total impedance from A to B, or from one terminal to the other. Again, with a Pi network, this can be a little bit confusing. We've got to carefully look at this circuit, especially now that we've added this short circuit in, because it actually changes the total impedance uh, as we calculate it. First of all, starting at the top terminal, we immediately split in our path. We can go this way through the 330 ohms or this way through the 220 ohms. So because there's a split there, these two resistors must be in parallel. If we go through the 220, that takes us to terminal B. But if we go through the 330 ohm resistor, we reach a split again where we have the option of either going through the 470 ohm resistor to B or going through a short circuit to B. And if we uh, take the maxim that current always takes the path of least resistance, the same is true in this case. Uh, there's no sense in going through a 470 ohm resistor when it's been shorted out by this short circuit loop here. And so actually, again, even in the Thevenin resistance, the 470 ohm resistor in this case is um, something that we can, we can ignore. It doesn't factor into our equations at all. And so simply, we're left with the, the, the resistance between A and B, or between the terminals, as 220 in parallel with 330. So I'll make a, a little note of that down here. Our Thevenin resistance, RTH, is equal to 220 in parallel with 330. The double slash there is just my shorthand uh, for calculating resistors in parallel. Uh, I'll not go through that particular calculation uh, here, but if you are not sure how to calculate uh, resistors in parallel, I suggest going back to the video where we go over that topic. But in this case, our answer comes to 132 ohms. And so very simply, as a last little point here, we can simplify this entire circuit, like we said at the start, down to one voltage supply um, and one uh, series impedance, uh, which is our Thevenin resistance. And we've got our open terminals on the end there. There's our Thevenin equivalent circuit. And we've said finally that that voltage is eight volts and this impedance is 132 ohms. So these two circuits here are completely equivalent. Uh, we can take any measurements across the terminals that we like and we'll find that whether we measure the voltage here or here or the impedance here and here or the short circuit current, so on and so forth, we're going to get an equivalent result, um, even though this is a much simplified circuit. So I hope you found this video useful on applying Thevenin's theorem to a Pi network.